Sydney Metro. It's one of the biggest transit projects in Australian history. 46 new and converted stations spread out across four new lines and 113 kilometers of track. Sydney Metro West is one of those new lines. Currently under construction and set to open in 2030, new stations will be located at Westmead, Parramatta, Sydney Olympic Park, North Stratfield, Burwood North, Five Dock, The Bays, Piermont, and Hunter Street. Its aim is to make travel between the cities of Parramatta and Sydney as low as just 20 minutes. But there's a problem. Before I continue, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And do be sure to check out the rest of my channel, your go-to YouTube destination for all things city planning, after the video. The Sydney Metro West is a bold project, one that will significantly improve travel times between the two biggest population centres in metropolitan Sydney. So what's its problem? Well, the station gaps along the line are big. The base to 5 dock is 4.5 kilometres, and Sydney Olympic Park to Parramatta is 7 kilometres. It's left many confused. The purpose of a new metro line, after all, is simple. To provide heavy rail access that is easier for residents surrounding the line to readily access than pre-existing rail infrastructure. And yet, there are no plans for the suburbs of Lilyfield, Newington or Camellia all suburbs the metro will be passing through to get new stations. Why build a metro line if it won't even prove useful for so many residents living along the line? Well that's a complicated question to answer, and I'm going to try my best to explore both sides of the argument in this video. But before I can, we have to try and understand why the Sydney Metro West is even being built in the first place. First reason, to alleviate congestion on existing rail lines. The T1 North Shore and Western Line is, by far, the busiest line in Sydney. Pile on to that the fact that the T9 Northern Line and the T2 Inner West Line both share the same rail corridor between Strathfield and Sydney, and things start to make a little bit more sense. Demand on the T1 Line exceeded capacity at peak times pre-COVID and no doubt it will return to this level in the upcoming years. Second reason, to provide time savings between Parramatta and Sydney. Travel time between the two centres currently takes 30 minutes on the T1 line, but that's skipping stations. If you don't start at one of the express stations along the express T1 line, such as Parramatta, you have no choice but to take the all stops T2 line, meaning you'll take even longer to get to Central. There's a third reason, which I feel is probably one of the biggest cruxes behind the Sydney Metro project as a whole. I'll get to that. Jeez, I say I'll get to that a lot in my videos. Something I want to stress is that the Sydney Metro West isn't just about providing rail access to those who can't already access it. And the government has been pretty transparent about that from the beginning. Sydney is aiming to become a metropolis of three cities. The Eastern Harbour City, the Central River City and the Western Parkland City. It's all part of the growing need for our city to decentralise, to make it increasingly possible for people to live and work away from Sydney CBD, in new centres such as Parramatta and the new Bradfield City in Sydney's far west. By building the Sydney Metro West, it'll be easier to get to Sydney, sure, but crucially, it will also be easier to get to Parramatta faster than ever before. 20 minutes between Parramatta and Sydney? That's how long it takes me to drive to my girlfriend's house, and she lives in the same council as me. 20 minutes is nothing in the grand scheme of things, and it will support Parramatta's growth. Projects like the Metro West, like the upcoming Parramatta Light Rail, will slowly support Parramatta's transformation into an economic, commercial and entertainment hub of Sydney. People will want to work in Parramatta, to visit Parramatta, simply because the metro will make it so easy to get there. But that leads us back to our problem, doesn't it? Will the Metro West really make it so easy to get to Parramatta if there's not enough stations? Well, 
Once again, the government has always been quite transparent on why exactly the Sydney Metro West has fewer stations than one may expect. In order to achieve a balance between efficient travel times and the ability to service areas effectively. If there were too many stations, then a travel time of 20 minutes wouldn't be able to be achieved. Specifically, planning documents outlined that 9 to 10 stations was the maximum number of stations possible between Parramatta and Sydney. So, the question simply has to be asked. How did the government manage to choose their precious few stations? The answer to that question is also the third reason that the Sydney Metro West is being built. Two words. Densification. Wait, that's one word. Urban planners don't see rail projects as just transport modes. They see them as opportunities. The area around stations is precious land. Land which should be integrated into multi-purpose developments where possible. Densification needs to be happening around these stations. Rather than giving rail access to few residents in low-density housing, this precious rail access should be maximised to as many residents in high-density housing as possible. Sydney has a land use problem, one I explored in my Marsden Park video, and by densifying around metro stations, we can allow a greater proportion of people to use public transport over cars. It's smart, it's opportunistic, it's the more efficient way to build urban centres and help to dismantle the car centricity of Sydney. I found an article that summarises it perfectly. Move away from the rail station being simply a final transport terminus to a destination in itself and a hub to create new places that truly support the global city's long-term needs. Cities globally have been doing it. London, with development at their new Battersea Power Station station, and also New York, with their Hudson Yards development. And now, Sydney is doing it. Urban renewal across the already completed Sydney Metro Northwest Corridor is well underway, and there are no plans to stop this renewal. From the get-go of this project, the government has wanted to focus this development at Westmead, Parramatta, Sydney Olympic Park, the bays, and at their Sydney CBD station, Hunter Street. These are areas that are set to undergo massive urban transformation in the decades to come, and the Metro will help to spark that transformation. They're areas where development is possible, where densification is possible. Running through the list of other station locations, Piermont is already significantly densified, and overstation development is on the cards. Development near the new Burwood North Station is also currently under strong consideration. Okay, there are no developments currently planned at 5 Dock, but its location on the important Great North Road Corridor gives it easy transport access to areas to its north and south, and it would likely drive development in these areas. Oh, and North Stratfield pretty much only exists because an interchange with the T9 line was inevitable. But for the most part, the Metro West project will drive development around its stations. Development isn't just pivotal to the government's aspirations of de-sprawling our city. It also helps them recoup the costs of these expensive metro projects by selling land off to developers. So, mostly, areas not chosen for metro stations don't have much future potential for densification. Let's start between the bays and Five Dock, where there will be a big 4.5 km gap between stations. Leichhardt, Leichhardt North, Lilyfield and Haberfield pretty much all have the same problem. They're low density areas with heritage listed buildings and limited employment prospects, limiting the potential for future development. On top of that, some of these stations would have to be too deep to be conducive to passenger access. Let's move to between Parramatta and Sydney Olympic Park, which will have a 7km gap between stations. Silverwater is mostly an industrial suburb, with very limited potential or government desire for development. There's a desire to maintain the North Lidcombe and Newington areas in their current state, meaning no future developments. Funnily enough, Rydalmere is actually the perfect candidate for development, and it was considered for a metro station for ages. But it's just too far out of the way. And then, 
Camellia. Ah, Camellia. Camellia ruins my entire argument. The message I've been trying to push in this video for one key reason. Every other station that I've eliminated has limited potential, or at least limited desire from the government, for development. But Camellia? There are currently bold plans to transform what has historically been a largely industrial suburb into a new city centre with up to 10,000 new homes. They're even building a new light rail stop at the site of the old Camellia railway station. Camellia is the perfect candidate for a new metro station. A new development that could perfectly capitalise on rapid access to both Sydney and Parramatta. So, why aren't they building a new metro station there? Well, because construction challenges will subject it to contamination and flooding. Is that really a good enough excuse though? I don't think so, no. It's short-sighted, it's a wasted opportunity, and it goes against the principles behind the Sydney Metro West in sparing development. Development in Camellia could truly take off if a metro was built there, but that's going to be all the harder without a metro station. The densification argument continues to fall apart when you consider one simple thing. Does the Sydney Metro West have to just spare development? One of the first reasons I personally gave as to why a metro should be built is to provide rail access to those that don't already have it. Whether or not development and densification is actually possible shouldn't really matter, should it? Residents of the Leichhardt and Newington areas don't have heavy rail access, simple as that. And they deserve to, especially since the metro is going to be running underneath their suburbs regardless. But wait a second. Densification potential isn't the only means by which the government chose their station locations, is it? Their steadfast goal of achieving a 20 minute travel time between Sydney and Parramatta. Ever since the beginning, it's been a key selling point for the project. But you simply have to wonder, why is it so important anyways? Surely an extra 5 or 10 minutes with a few more stations isn't the make or break point for commuters. The government seems very resolute in keeping that goal, whether we like it or not, and I would imagine that, plus the lack of densification potential, is why stations aren't being built in more areas. But at the same time, I do get it. Engineering challenges, if not impossible, would probably be hard to navigate at Camellia. Building a station in already established areas like Leichhardt and Newington can be difficult to justify when chances are not as many people will use these stations as other ones. The cost to benefit ratio in these areas probably isn't great. As much as we may want stations in these areas, the government has made decent, if not strong, arguments as to why they're not being built. Look, I don't love it, but I understand it. And with preliminary construction on the Sydney Metro West having already started, it's probably too late for any major changes to be made. But hey, the Sydney Metro West does have the exciting prospect of being extended on its eastern end to the eastern suburbs and on its western end to the new airport in the distant future. When will these extensions actually be built? It remains to be seen. In the meantime, the wait is on for 2030 when stage one of the Sydney Metro West between Parramatta and Sydney CBD opens to the public. If you like this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.